All right, so I just wanted to follow up on the video that I did before about symmetrizing a mesh in Maya and in Blender because I've been working on something that I think it's pretty cool and I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, it is basically an add-on for uh, Blender and it comes with a couple of modifiers made in geometry nodes that basically replace the vertex reordering add-on that I was using before and it's adding a, a bunch of new features that make the vertex reordering and also the symmetrizing in real time so there's always a live connection so you can even edit the mesh and it will update so yeah i'll show you now how to install it i uploaded the add-on on uh, gumroad there is a very long and extensive documentation about it but we're just gonna go through everything in the video so to download it you just uh, put zero the add-on is free and then just click I want this. Just put zero again. Click on get. And then it will take you to the place where you can download the files. I'm just gonna download the nodes first and then the add-on second. There you go. So let's go back to Blender and uh, install the add-on. So we have to go here under edit preferences and under add-on, you just click on the arrow here and install from disk so you just go where you download it and click on the zip file and install it now the add-on is installed so to use the geometry nodes once we download the file we have to make sure that they are in the asset library to do that we just have to copy them into one of the paths that it's uh, used by the asset library and we can find them here under preferences file paths and this is the default one so you can just copy this and, and drag the file there. I've already done that. So um, here under asset browser, there is a new category called unassigned. And here there are four four nodes. So to use them, we, we just have to grab them on the object like this. And well, this is a node, but the other ones are gonna just, of course, they're not going to do anything at the moment because we didn't set up the attributes, but let's see how to do that next. Okay, so here I got two meshes. They have the same topology, but the vertex order is not the same. That means that if I try to join them as a shape key, it will not work. The mesh with the shape key is gonna break. So how do we solve that? We just have to first create a relationship between the two meshes. And we're gonna do that by selecting both, get into edit mode, and from the mesh menu, we're gonna select this new operator called create topology mapping attributes. So with that selected, it is going to prompt us to select matching phases on both models. I'm gonna pick a phase that I can easily track on the other side. Uh, I would say this one is pretty good. And then I have to make sure that the highlighted edge is the same on both sides. Once I got those selected, I just have to press enter and it will create one attribute on both meshes. This attribute is storing the indices of the other mesh into the mesh, all right? So now if I drag the topology blend modifier on any of the meshes, it will basically work as a blend shape and it will blend one mesh to the other. So the connection between the two meshes is always active. So that means that if I modify this mesh, the other one is gonna update. So there is one thing that we didn't do and the eyeballs are not moving. The reason why the eyeballs are not moving is because they have not been tracked in the attribute. So we can do that just by repeating the same action. So let's go here, select both of them. Mesh, create topology mapping attributes. Let's pick this edge. Let's see if I can easily track it on the other side. All right, I think I can, should be this one. Let's press enter. And yes, I think it worked. Yeah, I picked the right one. So let's do the same thing on the other eyeball. So let's get here and select the operator and pick the mesh, pick the face. So there's one thing that I forgot to mention. With the left click, we lock the face, but if we want to unlock it with the right click, the face will unlock. It works on both faces. So if this is locked and I want to unlock it, I just have to right click on it. Okay, so this should be the right one. Oh, no, it's not. This should be the right one. Let's press center. Yeah, cool. 
So now we have the two meshes matching. So what if I want to just have the vertex order transfer from one mesh to another? I can do that. So I can get rid of this and I can use the vertex order modifier. So I need to drag the vertex order on the mesh that I want to conform to the other. So if I want to use the vertex order of this mesh and this mesh, I have to drag the modifier on this one. Then I click apply. And now if I try to join them as a shape key, it will work. Cool. All right. So let's move to the more interesting part, which is the topological symmetry. So the same operator we used before, if it selects two faces on the same mesh, it will create a different attribute. This attribute will track the symmetry of the mesh. So if I get into the operator and I pick these two faces, making sure that I select the middle edge, it will track the symmetry. One thing that it's important to notice is that I do not have to necessarily pick the middle edge. I can pick two faces that are uh, specular one to the other. And the edges, they need to be specular too. So this will work too. So let's press enter. And now let's drag this modifier here. And you will see that we have the symmetry happening. So of course the eyeballs, since they are separated elements, they're not tracked, but we can just do that by repeating the same operation. Let's run the operator again. And we have to remember that the the polygons, they have to be specular. So if I select this one, the opposite one should be, uh, I guess this one. Let's press center and see what happens. Uh, no, there is a rotation. So since there is a rotation, because I picked the wrong one, let's undo. The reason why I'm undoing is because if I uh, track an element that I tracked already, it will erase all the tracking that I've done before. So if you realize that a track has been done wrong and you don't want to lose the previous elements that you tracked before, it's better if you just undo. Okay, so let's do it again. Mesh, create topology mapping attributes. And let's pick this guy. And I guess it's this guy. Let me check. I think this should be right. Let's try again. All right, so now we have a symmetrical mesh. Let's take a look at all the options we have here. So here we have the action, which is blend, which is basically blending the left side and the right side. And then there is a there are a bunch of options for this action about the seam and the blending. Uh, but let's see the other ones first, and then we, move, we will move to the seam later. So flip, it will basically flip the mesh to the other side. And symmetrize, it will, it will just average the vertex position on both sides. So there is also symmetry axis. So if I change the symmetry axis, this will probably break. And the reason why it will break is because this mesh topology is symmetrical on the x-axis. So if it was symmetrical on the y-axis, we need to pick the y-axis. All right, so let's move to the next one. Let's go back to blend. And the next one is flip axis. So basically it's gonna flip to the other side. And here we can see that the center is crunching. And we can fix that by tweaking the parameters on the seam. So we can increase the, the smooth. And if we see that it's still crunching, we can increase the smooth iteration. And then what else we can do? We can also increase the spread. So to show you what the spread is, is basically is expanding the gray point, which is a 50%. So the 50% blender will be wider. Let's put the seam to zero and you will see what I mean. So basically this is 0, 0, 0 0.5 and 1. So if I increase the spread, the gray point, it will get larger and larger. And then we can smooth it and decide how, how wide we want the averaged vertex position to be. And basically that's it. Oh, one more thing is that this is the live, this is a live deformer. So basically if I try to move points here, Nothing is going to happen because I'm on the wrong side. But if I try to move it on the side that it's mirrored, it will reflect on the other side. The thing is that the mesh is going to be still symmetrical, but we can modify this node to work with a mesh that it's not symmetrical. So let's bring the factor to zero and let's get into geometry nodes and let's take a look at what's going on here. So 
I'm not going to cover this node, which is the one that is driving the symmetry. I think I'll make a video about that. Later on, I will explain how I set up the network. I also have to admit that I'm not really good with geometry nodes. So I don't feel like I'm good enough to explain you guys how geometry nodes work because I am learning myself. So, but maybe I'll cover how the symmetry thing works. So if we duplicate this node, which is the main one, and then we just connect everything, like the action, symmetry axis, flip factor, smooth seam, smooth iterations, and seam spread. Uh, now what we can do in the geometry socket, we can add a bake node. The bake node is gonna bake the mesh every time we press this button. So now we're basically gonna take a snapshot of the mesh. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna have this base position that it's stored, and we're gonna subtract that to this one, which is the one of the mesh that is going right into, in, into the geometry socket. So let's add a vector math node. And let's choose subtract. Let's plug this first and this second. And what we can do, we can basically replace this here. Yeah, and of course, now we're basically setting all the points to zero because we only have a delta here. So what we can do instead of using the position, we can use the offset. So we disconnect the position and plug the offset. And now if I set the factor to one, nothing is gonna happen, which is what we are expecting because we have the mesh baked here. And now I want to basically have a symmetrical change on every time I move the vertex. So now if I try to drag the vertex here, it will keep the offset and it will add basically all the changes on the other side. So this is pretty cool. Um, I don't think it's possible to do that in Blender at the moment. Uh, there is um, there is a symmetry, uh, topological symmetry attribute, but I didn't manage to make it work. So I'm just gonna show you how that, how that works. So basically, if you wanna keep the offset, you cannot. And uh, the topology, it doesn't track all the time. So, but I think it's better if I, if I just show you. So if I enable the symmetry and then I just go to topology mirror, and if I try to move, select a point, try to grab it, it basically is gonna, if, if the, if, if the proportional editing is enabled, it will try to symmetrize the mesh, which is not great. And uh, if it is disabled, every time, time I try to move it, it will basically try to snap it on the other side which is not great either. So if I have this selected and I try to move, it's basically trying to mirror one side to the other. It doesn't keep in mind the offset, which it makes it not usable. This should be a tool to symmetrize the mesh. It should not be a tool to edit the mesh. All right, so that covers everything for today. And you guys let me know what you think about it. Just download the add-on in the nodes. Let me know if you have any problem with it. Just um, Leave a, leave a comment if you have any ideas on what do you want me to cover next. Just leave a comment and uh, yeah, let's keep in touch. Take care.